Hey guys, look at this neat book of ancient demonic rituals that I found. They thought it would be fun. This will be fun. They thought nothing bad could possibly happen. It's not like anything bad could possibly happen. Did I just say that? They thought there was no way they could release an ancient evil into this world. There's no way we can... Wait, what? They were very wrong. Okay, you guys are hearing this too, right? I'm not going crazy. Oh, thank God. I thought it was just me. Oh, wait, wait. Wait, can we go back to the whole evil thing? But I didn't even open the book yet. Float. They all float. And when you're down here with me, you float too. <laughs> Great job, asshole! Now you've released it into our world! Yeah, that wasn't me, I swear to God! I know! I'm yelling at the voiceover! Now, the only way to fight an ancient evil... I think it's less of a voiceover and more of a narrator! Seriously? You're doing this right now! Is with more evil. Guys, it's clearly a movie trailer! Oh, come on! become part of a bigger universe you just don't know it yet annie wilkes my name is annie wilkes i'm your number one fan christine we'll show those shitters what we can do cujo cujo won't hurt him he likes kids is there any way we can get any good guys in our uh, team with us down down all right fine i'm mike Hensley. Here for the big event. Your name is John Coffey. You like to drink. Name's Red. I'm known to locate certain things from time to time. Look, we're going up against a demon clown and you give us Morgan Freeman. Do you know how hard it is to get some of these clips for this skit? You're lucky I don't stick you with the lawnmower man. This September. You're too old to stop me. I'll drive you crazy and I'll kill you all. The fire pit takes you to your final destination. Suck my fat one, you cheap dime store hood. Ah! The most terrifying field trip. You bad man. Of all time. No shit ever came between you and Christine. Watch out. Fire in my misery! Hey. What are you growling at? <laughs> Welcome. Go to hell! To King Town. Well done, Mr. Insulin. Well done. I hope they do all right back there. Do we, uh, should we feel a little bad about ditching them? Let's go on in the final battle of you versus you. Yeah, I really don't think they're going to miss us. You guys want to go record the podcast now? It's getting late. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's that please, good. yes, please, yeah, yes, yes. So hurry, hurry. Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. All right, kids, all aboard the field trip to Kingtown. Richard Dreyfus to Stand By Me, River Phoenix to Explorers, James Cromwell to The Green Mile, Jeffrey DeMunn to The Shawshank Redemption, Gail Bellows to Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, Javier Botet, It. revolves around you. They think that you'll always be protected and cared for. Then, one day, you realize that's not true. Because when you're alone as a kid, the monsters see you as weaker. You don't even know they're getting closer. 
until it's too late. I saw something. A clown. Yeah, I saw him too. What happens when another Georgie goes missing? Or one of us? Are you just gonna pretend it isn't happening like everyone else in this town? If we stick together, we'll win. Oh man, I smell like balloon animal. Ah. <clears throat> yes, good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome to another milestone episode of a milestone edition of the Fire Pit Podcast, the 25th episode and the end of our field trip to Kingtown. I'm Tom, British name Thompson, and... <laughs> Anyways, I'm Tom, and we've been to space, we've escaped prison, our brain tumors are gone, and we found the body and pulled a gun to keep it. But now, now we must see if we are all ready to float down here. And as per our rules, we've taken an actor or actress from our last film and moved them, floated them, if you will, to this film. (laughs) <laughs> and to tell us who we're watching and what we're watching, I hand the hot mic over to Nigel. Think fast. Push you off. Thank you, Tom. Thank- no, 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 no. Ah! Yes, yes. Uh, thank you. I'm Nigel, American named Dan. And last week we saw Javier Botet try and find his big toe, not find it, and then take it out by dragging a kid under a bed and the most obvious jump scare in the history of jump scares in scary stories to tell in the dark. Tonight, we may fare a little bit better with the scares in tonight's movie, the 2017 remake of Stephen King's It. We are watching It, Chapter One, last stop on the field trip to Kingtown. And to give us a rundown on the film, I'll turn things over to Josh. (coughs) Well, thank you, Dan. I'm Josh, British name Reginald. And tonight, we are watching it the first in a two-part series this is chapter one obviously the second one is called it chapter two this is based on a novel by stephen king and as dan mentioned before it is our final stop on the amazing field trip to kingtown all i know is whoever picked this list really good job fantastic guy um i'm a huge fan Moving uh, on, okay, moving yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. yeah, could you stop stroking it so loudly, Josh? This is we yeah, do want to have this be a family podcast. No, and a porn I didn't realize podcast. you guys could hear me stroking. Sorry. Anywho, I've got some numbers and data here. I... Who does number two work for? Well, they've gotten further away. I guess that's good. So, uh, anywho, this movie was directed by. I'm going to screw this up. Andy Muschietti. It was released on uh, September 8th, 2017, has a runtime of about 135 minutes, and had a budget of about $35 million, with a box office draw of $701.8 million. As I said before, this is based on the novel. This movie was a long time in the making, with pre-production starting back as far as 2019. I think you mean 2009. You said 2019, so we're talking about a (laughs) movie. It was produced after it was released. Okay, that really is production hell. Yeah, they started producing it after they released it. Jesus Christ, Hollywood's got their ass backwards. Oh, the the pandemic's really screwing everyone up, doesn't it? So this movie was a long time in the making, with pre-production starting back as far as 2009, Uh, even changing directors when the original Kerry Fukunaga wanted to make a movie far away from the original. And then Andy Muschietti was brought on, and this version is much more faithful to the novel, even more faithful than the original TV miniseries. This movie premiered number one on its opening weekend, making $123 million. For reference, the number two movie that weekend was Reese Witherspoon's absolutely terrible rom-com, Home Again. Seriously, it's terrible. Don't watch it. Which made, wait for it, $8.5 million. So know, wasn't close. It was... Neck and neck. Wow. Wow. So Razor if one thing. yeah, if one or two people in the lobby go to a different movie, it's just completely different numbers there. Yeah, I know, right? Just oof. like one vote mattered. Needless to say, it made 
all that money that weekend. It was finally bumped from the number one spot on its third week by Kingsman Golden Circle, but it did remain in the top ten for two months. Also, finally, happy belated birthday to the one and only Stephen King himself, who was born on September 21st, 1947, and he is a glorious 73 years old. Ah, happy birthday, Mr. King. Well, we are recording now. Yeah. indeed. Yeah. Yes. Happy birthday. We are recording this episode four days after his 73rd birthday. Sweet. Oh, nice, nice, so, nice, nice. So it was released on September 8th. It was the highest grossing film in September of all time. So I guess to hear what we hope to get out of this film, Tom, why don't you go first? Like, I know you've seen this movie, but what are you hoping to get out of this viewing? Okay, well, I didn't like this film the first time I saw it. I thought it kind of sucked. Just did, did not hit me in any of the ways it should have hit me. I'm hoping maybe I can find some enjoyment of this because it's been in the subconscious of pop culture since the book and since the Tim Curry movie, which incidentally I've never watched all the way through, through. So it's not like I can use that as an excuse for why I didn't like it when I saw it. It was scary it, back when it was released. That's all I can say. I've seen some clips since then. It's whew, it's um definitely kind of vibes like goosebumps with a slightly more edge the 1990 version this one i'm not gonna lie it's well directed i when i saw it it's very inspired by uh, um, stranger things but that's the thing stranger things has kind of set the new standard for how the spielberg inspired 80s nostalgia films are that it's impossible not for this film to try to riff on it which isn't fair to this film. This this came first. This story came first. This is the story that other knockoffs have been emulating for years. So when you go back to it, it just feels like a knockoff. So I'm hoping to really kind of just maybe a second viewing. I'll see something better, things I'll like. But I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm not expecting much from this film. Rarely have I seen a film that I didn't like and then had my mind changed a second time. With a few exceptions. I, that has happened before for me. So maybe that'll happen today. Um, so, yeah, those are my thoughts on that, really. Well, I'm hoping, that, like, I'll get it on my mind, but I wanted to hear uh, Nigel's next. So, Nigel, what are you hoping to get from this movie? I know you haven't seen it. You're the only member of us that uh, haven't seen this one yet. Yeah, I've only seen about maybe 10 minutes of it, and that was actually at your place a couple years ago when the movie came out. You and your wife were watching it when I came no, I was watching it. She refuses to watch anything horror-related. Oh, okay. Well, but I've only seen like 10 minutes of it. I avoided this movie because I have seen the original TV miniseries all the way through, and I used to really like it. So I didn't see the remake because of I had a fondness for the original TV miniseries. And I recently rewatched the TV miniseries not too long ago, and it's terrible. Like, it <laughs> doesn't hold up. Definitely a product of the 90s. Tim Curry's the only one in the movie that is earning his paycheck. The rest of the movie is just forgettable. The ending is beyond stupid. Just all of it is bad. Just terrible so i'm i kind of want to watch this one because i want to compare the two obviously and um i know i say this a lot when i go through a movie i haven't seen yet but i do kind of want to see what all the fuss is about ever since this one came out it chapter one you see this stuff everywhere now the pennywise memes on facebook and reddit and instagram and all that i'm, I'm seeing people dressed up as pennywise for Halloween or even, you know, dark, sick brick jokes there. But I see kids dressed up as Georgie. So, That's I mean, terrible. It's, uh, but I've seen it. In fact, last year, walking around Josh's neighborhood, I don't know, Josh, do you remember you saw the kid dressed up as Georgie with missing his arm? It was, <laughs> he, had, he had it tucked into his sleeve so he didn't have an arm. I vaguely you know? remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, this, this movie's in the zeitgeist. It's in the pop culture of, of a lot of different age groups. Even age groups that probably shouldn't be watching this film. I just, uh, I kind of want to see what, what it's all about. And, and I'm kind of looking forward to seeing this. I know that Tom didn't like it, but, and I know a few other people that didn't like it, but I don't know. It's popular. So I, I just, that's what I want to kind of want to get at. I just really want to see what it's all about. Josh. I um honestly love this movie. And I really think the people who don't like it, 
are just pissed because when they went and watched it, they forgot to wear their brown pants. That's that's just what it is. That's honestly why I think they don't like the movie. It's true. It's true. I did. Uh, I did have to make some apologies to the lobby and movie theater employees for that. Yeah, he's no longer allowed there. Yeah. They got his name on the front door and a picture of him after well, he shot himself. Yeah, well, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm not allowed into that theater for other reasons unrelated to the shitting incident. But um, that's, it was a, uh, lot, it was a, it was one item of many. But uh, you no, know, I do love this movie though. Um, and in this week's episode of Josh is a terrible father. On my second viewing, my son happened to be in the room with me. For uh, record, at the time he was eight, and he watched it with me. Amazingly enough, he did not have nightmares that night. But no, I, he liked it. I really liked this movie. And honestly, it was one of those movies where it's like I didn't want to watch it initially because I was afraid I was going to be, you know, freaked out by it. And I will admit, there is a few scenes in this movie that legitimately scared the crap out of me. I thought I just think that the it's just a beautifully well done movie. I think it's one of those few movies that is better than its predecessor. Like, ra- raise your hand if you remember the uh, Total Recall remake with Colin Farrell. That's right. There's no hands raised. Ever. <laughs> We're on an audio format, Josh, but you're also not wrong. That that film yeah, was awful. Yeah, yeah, it was awful. And um, we could be broadcasting this across the world and nobody would raise their hands because nobody remembers that film. This one, it's like Dan said, it has permeated the zeitgeist and pop culture so hard. I think this is one of the few things, it's like, Dan, you said it, that uh, Pennywise in um, the original miniseries, it's like people was like, they're remaking it. Nobody can do a better job than Tim Curry. And how many times yeah. have you heard that about people redoing characters like that? It's like this came out and Bill Skarsgård did such a fantastic job. He made the role his own, which is impressive in its own right. And he, I think he did a fantastic job. Like I have memories of being terrified of the original one back in the early 90s. Of course, rewatching it as an adult, I was like, this is a joke. Right. This, this this was just a horrible joke made on me in the 90s. Like I'm looking for people to pop out of the side. Like, yeah, hey, we got you. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's a bad movie. That's to me the secret of a good remake is when they make the character their own. He doesn't try to be Tim Curry in this movie. He He's his own Pennywise. I always reference the remake of True Grit and um, that it's both movies are fantastic. The John Wayne version is amazing. And the Jeff Bridges version is amazing. And Jeff Bridges and John Wayne played the same character of Rooster Cogburn, but they both play him so differently that you can watch both movies back to back and you almost feel like you're watching a different movie. And so I was just going to say that the scenes that I've seen of Skarsgård as Pennywise, he's so much different from Tim Curry. And Tim Curry's good in the, the miniseries. I said, he's the only one in that one actually earning his paycheck. Um, the rest of the movie, the rest of the cast is, well, there's a reason why Tim Curry's really the only one remembered from there. Let's, let's just get out of the way. Let's exercise the demons, the compare contrast between the 1990 film and the 2017, uh, version. Cause it's, it's inevitable. It's even for it. Keep in mind, I'm totally down for this comparison, but there is one important thing to keep in mind. And we did talk about this in an earlier, uh, episode where we was comparing how going from TVs to movie was kind of, uh, promotion in terms of your career mm-hmm, yeah mm-hmm. keep in mind this was still the 90s so that was still very much in effect so mm-hmm. if you were on tv you weren't as successful as somebody in the movies like today you could be on a super successful tv show and never be in the movies and still be very very famous mm-hmm. right but, you know back in the 90s it wasn't like that no the uh, original one was a mini series it made for tv mini series so the quality is not as good as movies of the time. Like it was eventually packaged up as a full like three and a half hour long movie. Right. But it's still, it's still fondly remembered. Like I remember when it chapter one was coming out in theaters and there were still people saying, it's not going to be as good as the original. It's not going to be as good as the original. I'm just merely pointing out that for this comparison, you got to keep in mind that was a TV show first, just a mini series, which I wish Mm -hmm. they would do more of. Uh, that's a well, topic well, for a completely other episode, but uh, <laughs> yes, but no, that's also the thing you bring up too. I mean, t- it was a TV miniseries, and it was a risk too, because horror wasn't doing very well in movies or in television. The studios were very nervous about it. That's why, for the adult actors, they pick comedians rather than say 
known drama actors, but still it for its time, 1990, it broke box offices. It was, um, was it um, released in theaters? TV. I no, mean, when it, it was released on TV, premiered yeah, on TV. Yeah. And, and when they would rerun it, it was always a ratings draw mm -hmm. and, it's it held for quite a while. It was considered, it was always in the conversation of best Stephen King adaptations. It would get brought up with the same, in the same sentences as movies like Shawshank Redemption or uh, the shining. It, you would see like top five lists of Stephen King adaptations and it, the TV miniseries would be right up there with the shining. Some people would actually debate which one's better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this was a TV miniseries made for $12 million, which even in the 1990s was fairly small. It had 30 million views it, for both parts of it. it. It won, let's see here, two Emmy Awards, an Eddie Award, a one youth in film, and best miniseries recognition in the People's Choice Award. We look back on it now because we have these 2017 eyes, kind of the same way we used to look back on original series Star Trek. Like, look how cheesy this is. But for the 90s, especially for TV, it was damn good. And say what you will about the acting of the adults. The kids were great. They were constantly being praised, uh, much like in the 2017 film. Again, the parallels when I was researching this, you know, the part one, which focused on the kids, everyone loved. That's the one everyone focused on. The kids, actors were great. The second part, everyone thinks sucks. And here we are in 2017, a lot of parallels right there. Yeah. I think part of that, though, is I think I mentioned this in another episode. It might have been Explorers or even... Um, I, think it was, uh, I think it was our Stand By Me episode. It's Stand By Me. But I think the, one of the reasons why the first part of this story is always more fondly remembered than the second part is because the stakes are higher because it's children. Mm -hmm. Like, children are not as strong as adults. They're not as smart as adults. You know, so the danger with them being kids having to face down Pennywise is slightly more ramped up than adults having to face down Pennywise, even though both situations are just as perilous because it's kids, the stakes are a little higher. Yeah, I think part one for me was better, but I think uh, part two definitely had some better scenes. See, I've not seen the second part. I mean, do we want to talk about some of the scenes that stand out? No, 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 no. Let's, no, let's, let's see. I don't want to ruin anything yeah. for Dan. He's he's going into this a virgin. So let's uh, <laughs> yes, 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 let's, yes. Let's fucking proper. But don't edit you know, that out. incidentally, though, I mean, Dan shouldn't go in completely blind. He should at least know what some other people's experience uh, with this film with this. has been. So how about we have a little uh, little quiz section, team? I am totally okay with this. And I hate you because you beat me last week. And this should this was supposed to be my week because we were doing the uh, scheduled quizzes. And this was supposed to be my week. So fuck you, Tom. Yeah, well, you know, you're welcome, Josh. You can blame Dan for uh, suggesting the rule change, but don't worry. No, if... Josh can blame himself for me suggesting the rule change because only Josh's prizes were all STDs. He's got a fair point there. It is your fault for yeah, giving it's... us chlamydia so many times, yes, Josh. Yes, seriously. You have no I one to blame but yourself. don't have any retort. You are totally in the right. But per uh, the rule set down, I will be asking five questions. Uh, for this one, I was trying to find some punny titles there aren't as many as you think, and they all are the same. I was a little disappointed in the internet's uh, originality here. So, But I will give you the title of the review and at least one line from their review. And you have to guess between 1 and 10, you know, how many stars it gave. Closest one gets the point, and whoever gets most out of five points wins and gets to do the quiz for the next movie. Yay. Can we make it to where if you get uh, it right on the money, you get like a point and a half or something or two points? Yeah, we could do double points if you get it right on the money. You okay with that, Nigel? Yes. I don't think we any of us have really gotten on the money in a while, so we'll see how it goes. All right. Well, fire away there, Thompson. All right, all right, all right. So this one is from Shelbin92984. The title is... Anyone giving it above a six is stupid. And one of the lines from that is, 
This is why people like the Kardashians are famous. <laughs> wow. Um, I'm going to say a five. And I'm going to say a four. <laughs> Josh gets the double points. This is a four star. Nice. Wow. Yeah. So Josh is already up two points, Nigel. But it's still early. It's still anyone's game. In your this face. Is... I'm so broken. <laughs> this next one is from T.S. Purnell. The title is Why? And they write, if you have absolutely nothing else to do with your time, money, and or you are depressed, check out Stranger Things. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I mean it. Um, um, let me go first. This one's mine. You had to, you went first last time, so if you want to price is right me. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go seven. I'm going to say four. Nigel's closest. It's a three-star review. Oof. Yeah, so Dan's got one. Josh has two points. Still a close game, team. Keep the lead. So question number three. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, here we go. This one's from Lee Richardson, whose title says, Puts the SH solidly back in it. <laughs> they say, The hype surrounding this film was very well done. I congratulate the marketing and PR company spin for a complete piece of trash. I'm going to say one. I'm going to say three. Josh is closest. This was a five-star review. Yeah. What? Jesus. It sounds pretty harsh for a middle-of-the-road review. Yeah. I know, right? Well, it's like in games where, like, if it's a seven or lower, it's garbage. But in movies, it's like a seven is not a bad film. Yeah. Hell, Transformers is a six. Right. To most people. That's the average. To us, it's like a one. Yeah, what do I know? I mean, Swashbuckler got a six on IMDb. Yeah. And that honestly should have been in the negatives. Yeah. But, you know, IMDb's got to be nice like that. But yeah. this next uh, individual, no, nah, not nah, nah, so kind. Um, this one written by Angel on Deck. Title, It Sucked. <laughs> if you've always wanted a version of it without any heart, humor, subtlety, intrigue, or fear, this is your movie. I've got to say, these uh, puns are just so original. I know, right? So it sucked, right? I'm going to go with a three. I'm going to say one again. Nigel's on the money. Oof. This is a one Ouch. star. It is tied up, fellas. So this is the last question, and this is for all the marbles. And, you know, I'm just going to give you one of the pun reviews without anything they wrote because honestly what they wrote wasn't that interesting this is from trevor 82944 whose title reads these dang kids need to stop clowning around it's a terrible review and he should feel bad for writing that um i'm gonna say it's, it's, these dang kids should just stop clowning around is that what he said yes i'm gonna these say as a D E E S or these he, act he actually spelled these properly okay Okay. Uh, I'm going to say a six. Mm, I'm going to go seven. And Dan, with the come from behind win, this was a seven star review. Oh, excuse me, four star review. Sorry, this is a four star review. I am emotionally broken. Josh, if you really want to do the quiz next <laughs> week, you can do it. It's fine. No, I'm just playing into it, dude. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but the upset victory, the the Cinderella story for this quiz goes to Nigel. How's it feel to be uh, the underdog here, Nigel? I think uh, I think it's uh, it was worth it because um, Josh is broken and um, defeated. And I'm not, and if that feels good. Spoken like a true champion. So humble. I would like to thank Josh for losing to me. I'm and, uh, fine. I'm good. Totally like to thank, okay. I would like to I thank want to God. wish uh, Dan the best on his victory. And uh, yeah, good win. Good win. <laughs> All right, I, I win. <laughs> I win, I win, I win. I do not lose, I win. Insert sports pun. <laughs> Hey, I did better than, insert sports team that does bad. I'm the Michael Jordan of trivia. I am uh, the or quizzing. Foghorn, I'm, I'm the, Leghorn of Space Jam. I don't I, know. 
you, I don't do sports. Yeah, you really should just stick to movies. The reason so why there, this is a movie podcast, ladies and gentlemen, and not a sports podcast. <laughs> so is there anything else we wanted to discuss about this film? Any other final no, just, points? Any, God any... damn it, Tom. Play the fucking music. You know what? Now I don't want to. I'm not going to. Play the damn music, Tom. Okay. I hate both of you. <laughs> and he plays the music. <laughs> Dispersal host, editor, and ringmaster, Tom! Yes! Ladies and gentlemen, we have something for everyone here! We've got trapeze, we have pyrenees, and you better believe, we have clouds! That's right, folks! If you want it, we got it! And speaking of it, how about we hear a bit about our episode's sponsor! Hi there, boys. Oh, uh, God damn it! Uh-oh. So, do you want a photo? Yes. No! No, don't look in the light, you freaking moron! Uh, hold on, hold on. Let me check this thing, see if there's something to excise him or something. Mm, good luck with that. He's right! He's right! There's nothing in here but old Lifetime movie scripts! Who writes this shit? It's terrible! All of it's terrible! And... Gun! Wait, what? Ha ha ha! I was able to find a way to expel you forever! No, no! Javio Parvacoles! Javio Parvacoles! <laughs> Very nice, Tom. How'd you do that? Well, Nigel, with my new PC, of course. Courtesy of Rob's custom PCs. Rob offers builds for any budget for any custom PC build. Whether you want to game, stream, need a new media center, or want to expel an ancient evil from our plane of existence. Rob has over 10 years of expertise in computers and can really help you find the right fit for you. You can find a link to Rob's Facebook page on the description in this week's episode on our Podbean site. Rob really outdid himself with mine, if our epic battle is any attestment. I use it to edit this podcast, and now I can also do all kinds of amazing things as well, such as ridding the world of evil. So thanks, Rob's custom PCs, and you're welcome, world. But I wanted to float. We know, Josh. Yeah. We know. Rob's custom Rob's PCs, PCs do not build PCs, PCs that actually fight against evil. Impossible to believe, but the impossible is what we offer here at the Fire Pit. Yes, yes, and more yes. And if you want to offer us some of your products that you want advertised, recommendations for destinations, or just your thoughts, swing on over to Curtain Call Entertainment Inc. at gmail.com. That's Curtain Call Entertainment Inc at gmail.com just put fire pit in the subject line as well as whether you're emailing about an ad or a recommendation or whatever it is and let us know what you have and you can watch and be amazed as we take it and read it and feed it to our lions yes these are email eating lions that you can only find here at the Fire Pit. And that email again is Curtain Call Entertainment Inc. at gmail.com. Capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I at gmail.com. Now, while we work to get these lions out of their cages, Let's say we hop under the tent and see how the team is enjoying the clouds! Let the record show that I have absolutely every single light in my house on right now.
Already unrealistic. This kid would be inside playing Nintendo. Take it, Tom. You know you want it. Come on, Tom. Take it. Take I'm not falling God. for this again. Now, see, if this was 1988, if he wanted the kid down there, he would have been like Donatello or like Raphael. He is sending off so many warning signs. Kids are stupid. Seriously, that's just fucked up. I hope that kid's okay. He'll well, be fine. fine. He knows how to float. <laughs> it's Stranger Things. Yay! Yeah, we, we see it coming. Oh, big scare. See, this is where they're, they're, it's all wrong. If I was one of these kids, I'd start feeding these fuckers to the clown. Hey, I got some people that would love yeah. to float. Like, I would go broker a deal with Pennywise right now. I will feed you an unlimited lifetime supply of food. You spare me, and I'll make sure you have a fucking smorgasbord come July. All right, now Kylo Ren is going to go with Bubba. I'm glad I'm not the only one thinking this. <laughs> The new kid. Wow, that's such an original creative nickname. Yeah, this is totally unrealistic because kids would be calling him the fat new kid. Boy, do not be a sibling in a Stephen King movie. Why are all the adults in Stephen King movies, especially the ones that aren't supposed to be non-Euclidean horrors, creepy? Yeah, I mean, when you have the choice between being eaten by a demon clown or living the rest of your life with that... Bon appétit, but clown! <laughs> Open wide, I'm you, a coming. Is it better if I salt myself? Do you want that? I yeah. could get some uh, some cayenne if you're into that. Yeah, seriously. Got some of this Cajun dust from the spice store. It's really good. It goes on everything. I can just rub butter on my armpits. Do you like clothes? I will strip naked for you. Now you're making this weird. This is a... Uh, I'm going to try another kid now. <laughs> no, eat me. Eat Go me. Away. Go away! You're scaring me. I'm good. You you can go. <laughs> I uh, I'm uncomfortable. Sorry, I, I lost my head sorry, for a second. Sorry. <laughs> he had no body to go with. <laughs> you do that again, Josh, and I will turn this movie off, and I will end this podcast right here and there. Tom's is okay, but mine. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> I feel like the fat kid in the Stephen King movie. <laughs> <laughs> Jump scare. No, I'm good, babe. Hey, I'm totally it was good. Yeah, I was, I was typing the uh, hotness. Yeah. Seriously, his bone could be protruding out of his leg. And a pretty girl says, are you all right? That looks like it hurts. No, I'm cool. <laughs> Just I'm walk good. it off. Yeah, I'm oh, good. good. I'm yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, hospitals are for pussies. And I can tell you one thing. I am not a pussy. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> these, these are tears. These are... <laughs> This is her uh, sweat. I'm sweating from my eyes. Like he's trying really hard not to pass out from the pain. Like, are you know. sure you don't need to go to a hospital? No, I'm, I'm good. good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. good. I'm you good. wet I'm... yourself. You're looking just very sweat. pale. You're looking incredibly pale. Uh, you know, well, I mean, I just, just stay inside, play too much Nintendo. I don't get enough sun. I, uh, just going to go uh, to the gym and pump this out, man. Yeah. Get my swole on. You know, I'm just going just gonna to sit here for a few minutes, get my second wind, and I'll be all right. I'll be good. <laughs> Is Tell she going yet? Because I really need a hospital. <laughs> oh, my God. I can literally feel myself yeah, as, soon as, she, as soon as he walks away, one of the other guys like, are you sure you're okay? Get me to a hospital now. <laughs> I, I'm dying. I I'm literally dying. Desperately need a doctor. Why would anyone stay in this town? <laughs> That's a question for a lot of Stephen King stories. Guys, he lost his knife. He lost the source of his power. There's six, seven of you, one of him. You are three of him you all out, yeah, You all outnumber him. You can take him. Dick his finish ass. Him, finish him. Establish yeah. dominance. Yeah, he's he definitely given off some serious rapey vibes. Yeah. yeah. See, this this is why they was able to take on the clown. They're like, bitch, have you seen my parents? Yeah. yeah. I wonder what Pennywise's uh, philosophy on eating adults is, because I'm seeing at least one already that definitely should go on the menu. See, I'm actually not embarrassed to go to the store and buy those things for my wife. I just hate it because I always grab the wrong ones and then get yelled at. Well, no, I'm just like, there's a lot of choice there. Do I want her to feel like an open ranch in the summer breeze or a waterfall? <laughs> what if she, What if I get her the waterfall, but she really wanted the open meadow? I'm so confused. And then I start I... crying right there. Fortunately, it's right next to all the tampons and all the pads, so it just absorbs it right up. Nobody oh. acknowledges that I was actually crying. And then I just look like a sad guy who's sniveling in the tampon aisle. 
Look, there's something happening on the movie that isn't Josh's tragedies. <laughs> Every Josh story is horrible. Hey, look what's in theaters. Batman. Hey, guys, I know there's a killer clown, but fuck this. Let's watch some bat. Speaking of killer clown, there's a Batman film. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's perfect. Wow. Nice connection there, Tom. That's uh, attention to detail right there. Uh, it just dawned on me. Hey, speaking of killer clowns, let's watch Batman. Drag him away in three, two, one. Oh, you are off. See, not as predictable as you thought. Ow. Oh, he dead. Nah, he's just sleeping. It's a lot of blood for someone who's sleeping. He's, he's just sleeping. See? Sleeping. Why do you keep splitting the party? Fifth dimensional entity. Three dimensional morons. They should know better. Boy, I sure hope he doesn't come back when we're all grown up. That's a problem for future Richie. <laughs> future me will cash this check. Tom. Josh. If a fifth dimensional clown kidnapped you, you better believe that Dan and myself will do everything in our power to avoid looking for you. Yeah, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. We will go to your funeral. But by God, even if we know where you're stored, you're just done. And I'd have you know, Josh, I would do the same for both of you. Because that's the friends we are. We are best of friends. I would, I, if, if I even made it into the house and I saw the well, I would be like, toss a penny. Good luck, Tom, and leave. I'll have you know, Josh, I wouldn't even bother entering the house. I'm just saying I... if there's something managed to get me into the house. Like I took a wrong turn or I was drunk or something. I wouldn't go in there looking for you is what I'm trying to skid at. Oh, I, I got what you were saying, Josh. I, I, it, you were subtle about it, but and I just want to tell you, Josh, if I happened to wander in that same house and I saw you trying to cl climb out to save yourself, I would gladly reach out and push you back down. And Nigel is silent because he's already plotting every scenario. See, when I walked into the house to push you down the well, Nigel laughed, shut the door, locked it, and then uh, ran like hell. <laughs> you both are idiots. Oh, don't you worry about it. No, no, no part of the show. Oh, God, they're going to want their money back. like I'm changing identities again. You all get back to the show. Thank you all for listening and as always, good luck! And that is the cherry on top of our third destination film, gentlemen. I know. Oh my God. This thing started in March. Like, right. <laughs> this podcast start. Well, no, the podcast itself started in April, but Wow. Yeah, we started li watching movies together in March. It was, what, three episodes, three weeks before we started recording. All because Tom said, dude, if we're just going to record these and uh, give our final thoughts at the end of every movie, you guys want to do a podcast? Like, okay. <laughs> well, I've got nothing else to do, so sure, why not? It's a great way to spend a Friday night. and uh, Saturday I was told... morning. <laughs> <laughs> and, anyways, I digress. Yeah, sure. this is almost it's 2 like, o'clock in the morning, yeah. so I'm, I'm, like, I'm not firing on all cylinders here. I'm like, okay, what happened in this movie? All right, here we go. Stretch, stretch. So, this movie starts with Georgie and his brother getting a little boat built out of paper. Georgie's older brother is getting it ready for him, and then he makes this lame excuse that he's not feeling well, which seems like he's not feeling well. And when I say that, it's very clear that he does feel well, just doesn't want to play with his brother. So he uh, sends his brother outside to play. He's watching his brother play. His brother takes the thing, starts running down the uh, street, and the boat goes into a uh, gutter. Then Georgie talks with the clown that lives in the gutter and gets eaten. So flash forward a little bit. It's been like six months or so later. Georgie's brother, Bill, and his group of friends, the Loser Club, are now uh, the subject of the bully, Henry Bowers. New kid, Mike, moves into town. And Beverly is uh, another friend. But they're not a whole cohesive group at this point. But each of them starts seeing different aspects of Pennywise. Some come to him as a headless child. He comes to him as a creepy painting. Others come to him as his parents being burned alive behind him and he can't do anything about it. But he's slowly trying to get these 
fears tickled out. Basically, between them, Henry Bowers coming in, all of this stuff comes together. They start realizing that there's a connection between all of these fears. A few jump scares here and there, a few other realizations. They finally put a few things together, realize where Pennywise was at. They go to the house that had the well, and they made their first confrontation with Pennywise. They injure him, but then they leave. The group fight, they split up. Then uh, they come back together after they kidnap Beverly, and then they go in, beat, air quotes, Pennywise, and they think that he'll come back. Beverly got stuck in the deadlights for a while. She can see the future. They make a pact to come back however many years later to defeat Pennywise if he's not dead, and then they all went their separate ways. The end. And I'm sure they come back and nothing's there. They kill Pennywise, so it's just a wonderful group reunion everyone has crepes it's a wonderful montage then that will be the entire sequel it's the feel-good movie of the summer 2019 it's compared to 2020 it is (laughs) well well done on the summary reginald very well done imdb page up so i didn't forget names Smart, smart. I think uh, Nyes and Lai have a tendency to go, that one kid, another guy, and what's his face? Or I would have just said, if I was doing this summary, I would have just said Stranger Things and his not Stranger Things friends and stuff like that. Oh, also, I just realized, I think I'm going to do a lot of comparisons with other Stephen King movies we have seen, in addition to the kids' movies we watched this field trip. No, I think that's apt. Like I said, I haven't seen the original It 1990, but I've seen clips enough, especially of Tim Curry's performance. I can at least compare and contrast a few things here and there, but I know what I want to talk about. But Nigel, let's uh, start with you, man of the hour, the only one of us who has now seen both It's, at least the first part, and read the book. Um, I'm going to be honest, I really enjoyed this movie. I really, really liked it a lot. Um, I don't get the obsession some people have with it. I don't think it's the best movie ever. Definitely one of the better Stephen King adaptations. Definitely better than the TV movie. But I really enjoyed it. And I think I mostly enjoyed it because I thought the child acting was actually really good. I thought they casted the kids really well. I thought they let them behave like kids of their age. I was reading something about how a lot of people were turned off by some of the language in the movie and how the, some of the kids were behaving. This was all done by adults who forgot what it was like to be a junior high or high school kid where you cuss when your parents aren't around and you say dirty jokes when your parents aren't around and you try to talk like a grown up when your parents aren't around. So I thought Finn Wolfhard, uh, Stranger Things character was awesome. Like I just really liked him. You know, he made me laugh legitimately in the movie. I mean, I wasn't just laughing at his acting. I was like laughing at like the things his character was saying, like the whole, where the fuck are the legs? <laughs> <laughs> I love that part. It, it just cracked me up. And same with, you know, who invited uh, Molly Ringwald into the party? Um, kind of want to see the second one because I know the second one doesn't live up to expectations. So I kind of want to see where that one fell short. But overall, I really enjoyed this movie. It was definitely a good cap off to the field trip to Kingtown. And Thompson, what about you? Ah, well, I was actually going to tap you on the shoulder. But no, from my end, I know I said I wasn't really all that impressed with the film the first time I saw it. And that point still stands. I've softened a bit just because I'm able to appreciate more of the technical. But honestly, I haven't softened that much for all the technical brilliance behind the film. Well, let's just say I didn't feel like there was any real flow between the terrible moments. There was a levity moment where there being kids like swimming in ponds, biking, what have you. But then there's just like, and now this terrible thing happens. And now this terrible thing happens. It felt like this was half of a story we were being told. Even if I didn't know that this was a chunked out first part of a second part that was supposed to be link and log together it just it didn't feel connected it felt disjointed and that's why i don't really feel that impressed with it i didn't hate it per se it was better than some of the films we had seen before definitely better than scary stories to tell in the dark i'll give it this much it stands above that film but still a meh one for me curry petty wise still stands out as the better of the two scars guard was great he was menacing and dirty and definitely a horror but tim curry's pennywise just had 
a presence. He had panache. He had that charm that you're like, I'm fine. I'm your friend. Oh, no, now I'm a monster. Ta-da. He just knew how to ham it up better. And Scars Cards was a different Pennywise, but not the better of the two, in my biased opinion. That's where I stand, though. Uh, too Long didn't listen. It was good, horrible scenes, but not a good horror movie. I'll have some more additions, subtractions to that thought, but Josh, the floor is yours. Well, I got to disagree with you on the Tim Curry, uh, Bill Skarsgård. I think they're inherently different uh, versions of Pennywise. I feel like the Bill Skarsgård Pennywise would come off as more whimsical relative to a child than the Tim Curry one. I personally think you're looking at the Tim Curry one through a lens of nostalgia because having rewatched it relatively recently... That movie just is not good. And Tim Curry's does stand out, but that's like, hey, that's a really nice cheesecake and a pile of shit. <laughs> like, I think what thinks this movie so good is how well it's put together. Like, I think that the flow makes a lot of logical sense. I think the plot definitely progresses in a way to where these kids are slowly coming together as a team. It really works in terms of how Pennywise gets these kids and starts consuming them, basically. He isolates them, feeds on their fears, manipulates them. But these kids identified that, came together as a team, realized that he's not as strong when they're together. And then it shows them coming together as a team from these individual parts to the point where it's like, hey, we can injure him. And then they come together, they do it, they defeat him relative in this one. Obviously, there's a sequel. And I think they do a really good job of that. I love in this film the use of... uh, key framing especially for Pennywise especially in that opening scene when one of the bully's friends was stuck in the sewers Mm -hmm. and the uh, balloon slowly approached the camera from his view and then it pops and then you see Pennywise off in the distance he doesn't take up the entire frame but he holds there for like a second it feels like you know just long enough for us as the audience to identify that's Pennywise oh shit he's right there And then the way he stabilizes the camera around Pennywise's head as he's shuffling forward and it kind of blurs all of the exterior around Pennywise in a way to like really throw us off because it doesn't happen for very long. The longest time you see that effect happening is at the end of the film when Pennywise is doing his dance inside of his barn thing as Beverly wakes up inside of his lair. Mm -hmm. Um, That's like the most pronounced part you see that. Because he only does that when Pennywise is going full on like attack creep mode. But when Pennywise is just, I'm going to just say air quotes, human mode here, like he's talking with Georgie or he's talking with the boys or anybody at any point that's not Pennywise the clown. It's like that's when he uses that effect. I really think it's really awesome in that regard because he doesn't give Pennywise the entire screen. Also, when they chase him down to the basement for the first time and they see him climb into the well, it's not zoomed in on the well and watching him go down. We get like this stationary shot from a static position. And then you see Pennywise slowly crawl down. It's like you don't even notice it at first because he's like hanging on the well and then he crawls down. It's one of those things trying to pull that feeling that you see something through your periphery. And then you quickly turn. You're like, what the shit was that type of thing? I feel like he does a lot of that in this movie Mm -hmm. to kind of get your attention and to really tickle that fear of... uh, your what the fuck was that type thing, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The fear of what you can't quite see, but you know yeah. you saw something. Yeah, that's what I did like, like about this movie is that it didn't go so hard on the jump scare and did more with um, trying to set up atmosphere and mood to make you feel uneasy as opposed to building up jump scare and then moving to the next scene to build up to the next jump scare. It had some jump scares in it, but this movie was definitely all about setting up mood, mm-hmm. setting up atmosphere making it so that you just feel uneasy in almost every scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there were a few scenes where it was a little too overt, like the the creepy house. That was almost cartoonishly horror story creepy. It's something you would see in a Scooby-Doo. I, how can anything like that possibly exist in reality? It definitely took me out of the moment. Had it been just a standard decrepit house? Sure, but no, it was mm, too much. Way you know, too much. I can kind of see that, and I, and, I, and I understand that argument. However, having seen the sequel, you do learn that there is a lot, to, and I'm not giving anything away in the sequel here, you do learn that there is a lot of mystery surrounding the city of Derry itself. 
like there's a lot of I don't want to say magic because it's definitely not that, but uh, like Derry itself has mystical qualities about it as yeah. a city. The book describes it as kind of a sleepy town, an emphasis on the sleepy. Like the adults are almost lethargic in the town and they don't really, I don't, they don't look into things too much. Like the fact that these kids seem to go missing every like 30 or 40 years or something like that. If that was happening all the time, eventually somebody would be like, we probably shouldn't investigate this. Mm -hmm. But the adults don't because there's, there's some kind of a, I don't know the books lethargy. Yeah. They're, they're lethargic. Josh, it's actually a really good way to put it. They're just, it's almost like Pennywise. I don't know if he's doing it intentionally or whatever, but he almost like he's cast a spell on the town to where they don't, it's not that they don't care. It's just that they don't care enough. They, and they did kind of hint at it in the movie. Like when they were looking at the other missing pictures and they were like, well, it's almost like she's been forgotten now that other kids are missing too. Also, when Georgie's parents aren't too gung ho about at least finding his body, you know, because sometimes when the when the kids have been missing for so long that he or she's probably been declared dead, the parents still want to find the body because they still want some kind of closure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like they gave up, yeah, yeah. Like they just kind of shrug it off and like Georgie's dead. We're never going to find his body. I haven't seen the sequel yet, so I can't really say for sure. But the book does emphasize that the town's kind of sleepy and it doesn't really care. Yeah, it's kind of um, of a H.P. Lovecraft like shadow over Innsmouth thing. There's this non Euclidean Mm. horror, and it's it's psychic waves are just impacting everyone else. Yeah, yeah. Because if that was really happening, even if it wasn't supernatural in nature, somebody would invest investigate that after a while like man every 20 years kids go missing in this town and they're never heard or found again it's like we don't even find remains of these kids anywhere somebody would be wanting to know what the hell's going on Mm -hmm. now that brings my question to you nigel again you've seen this and you've read the book how does this film succeed in capturing the mood uh, at least of the kids story a lot better than the tv movie does because the tv movie cleaned up a lot of what the kids got into probably because it was a TV movie and it was made in a different time, but the, the book's a little different because the book was written in the, the mid eighties and the adult section of the book takes place in the late seventies and the kids section of the book takes place in the fifties. So things are a little bit different in the book and it's been a long time since I read the book. I was in high school when I read this book and I don't know if anyone's ever seen the book it, but uh, it's a lot like the stand and that it's a doorstop super thick and it took me a couple of months to read it just because as a high school kid it was kind of hard to read the whole thing (laughs) it's a long book and and king's got a very peculiar style that he writes in so it's one of only three well four since i've listened to reader hayworth and the shawshank redemption it's one of only four king books i've actually read like i said i haven't seen part two yet so i can't judge it but the kid part in this definitely fits closer to the novel than the tv movie did Yeah, I think that was one of the big things, is they wanted to really stick closer to the book. They wanted to explore a little bit more on Pennywise's backstory. And I know in this this movie, they really didn't touch in on the mystery of Derry, the city itself. They do touch on that quite a bit in the sequel. I don't want to give anything away, but again, I don't think this is really a major plot point. It's said in the sequel that the longer you're away from Derry, the more you forget about it. So it's definitely a lot of implied stuff in this movie. This is one of those instances where some, maybe reading the book and then watching the movie, a lot of stuff makes more sense. Kind of like Ender's Game was for me. I just read the book when that movie came out. and As a whole, the movie didn't make a lot of sense. But coupled together with the book, I was like, oh, okay, well, that adds that, that adds that. I see where you're going with this. So watching it completely without having any of that history with the book, it was a lot harder to follow. But I think a lot of your arguments against this film can be hand-waved as being uh, the Pennywise magic. Overall, and I know this is a common theme with us, I don't see your arguments. I can understand somebody not liking this movie. I would say that of all of our uh, destination films, this is probably the least well-received by us. Because I think all of us liked Independence Day. All of us liked Jaws. And this one, at least two-thirds of us liked it. But I'd say it probably wasn't the best film on this entire journey. Like, if anything, I'd have to give that to Shawshank. Oh, yeah, well, that's unfair. That's a ringer right there. Mm. There there were some good ones in this, too. Let's, let's not kid ourselves. I yeah, mean, honestly, 
outside of scary stories to tell in the dark in probably a third of the green mile uh, i thought this was a pretty good list to go through i thought stand by me was awesome mm-hmm. explorers was surprising i was surprised at how much i, I actually enjoyed explorers and like i said green mile was a, a decent movie a little long it probably could have been edited a little bit down but mm-hmm. green mile was still a good movie shawshank obviously is a classic scary stories uh, no <laughs> <laughs> and i really enjoyed scary it. stories was a movie yeah <laughs> I, I totally agreed with the negative reviews on scary stories that said it wants to be more than goosebumps but it also wants to be less than it yeah I can see that. It's Especially a, having just it. now seen it. Yeah, we can definitely say, yep, yep. Scary stories, you just, yeah. reason why you avoided releasing at the same time as this film. Yeah, yeah. you would have been buried. Because, well, yeah, the scary stories would have gone up, if it was released in October, it would have gone up against this sequel. That's right. It's sequel, which, again, may not have been as good as this one from the reviews, but. There was still a lot of buzz around it. Yeah, see, it didn't make as much money as this one, but I honestly, I haven't seen both of them. I would say It Chapter 2 had more creepy scenes, but I like the story and pacing of the first one better. I have problems with this film, but it's still a pretty decent film. Yeah, this isn't the classic that Jaws or Independence Day. And again, I think Independence Day could be a generational classic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't think people from the who grew up in the 70s with Star Wars would really consider Independence Day a... Uh, big thing for them they'd be like yeah that i kind of remember that movie but i would say that this was a good list to go through i really enjoyed going through the field trip to kingtown and honestly outside of scary stories to tell in the dark i enjoyed all the movies uh, you know even most of the green mile and yeah explorers not gonna lie that was a surprise one i like that too mm-hmm. yeah when you presented that list josh i thought explorers was actually going to be my low point in the field trip i was just like oh we just get through explorers we got at least two good movies to get through and mm-hmm. scary stories might be okay and honestly i was surprised at how much i enjoyed explorers and i was really really pissed that kid dan never got to see that movie because he would have loved it i did really enjoy this field trip i thought it was a lot of fun definitely worth getting out of school for and i did enjoy our uh, destination film it's not one of my high-end absolute favorite films but i really really like this movie yeah this was a very fitting end to our field trip and i think really that's wraps it up for tonight because we've got another trip to go on so stay tuned for a special episode as we embark on our next movie destination Josh, uh, we've said it a couple times, and I'll repeat once more. The field trip to Kingtown has been a great success. Glad you brought Nigel and I along through space time, hard time, and it time. From the 30s through the 50s and on to the 80s, this has been the field trip to Kingtown. (laughs) That was pretty good. I like that. (laughs) But I do want to do a special shout out. We hit 400 downloads on Thursday. I know it's not a huge, huge number, but for a very young podcast like ourselves, that is definitely a milestone. Unfortunately, I don't know who it was. So if you are listening and you downloaded a bunch of episodes on Thursday, hit us up and we'll give you a shout out in next week's episode. And as always, I'm going to give a special shout out to the OG, Peggy, friend of the channel. Always happy to get the feedback and love that we get from you. I really do enjoy the fact that we are the little bit of sanity going on in your life right now. That's awesome. High praise. Also, a special shout out to an internet friend of mine named Perp. He's an internet gaming friend and a new-ish listener. He just recently started listening to the podcast. So I just want to thank him for listening. Uh, Josh, he's not our 400th download because I uh, told him about the podcast earlier in the week. So it's not him, but thanks for listening. I really do appreciate it. And I'd like to just take a moment to shout out to Rob, uh, of course, of Rob's Custom PCs. He he supported us for a while, and he was our first official-ish sponsor. He's been providing us some nice feedback, which we have been using and greatly appreciating. So I want to thank him for all this and for everything he's done to help spread the word and again for this marvelous bit of machinery that I'm using to edit this podcast, record this podcast, and do many other things outside this podcast. So thank you, Rob. It's appreciated. Fantastic. Fantastic. Right. Well thank you all for listening to this. The final stop on the field trip to Kingtown. Just as a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, Amazon, iTunes, and Google. 
be sure to like and subscribe, help our channel grow on whatever program you're using to uh, listen to our show. And if you'd like to interact with us more on a personal level, but still keeping that social distance, we do have a Discord that's opened up for anyone. Invite link is in the episode description and on our uh, hosting site, firepit.podbean.com. Feel free to join us there. It's a free service. You just might have to sign up an account. And feel free to offer suggestions for journeys or possible destination films we could go on. Chat amongst yourselves and who knows, maybe get a shout out or be a part of our trivia or something. And just as a little hint, you'll definitely want to stick around for the next episode because we're going to fight for this lost cause as we plan out our next route and destination. So tune in next special episode, Wednesday. Until then, I've been Tom. I've been Dan. And I've been Josh. This has been The Fire Pit. Thank you all for listening. And this has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Good luck out there. Awesome. Do we uh, want to go through that a second time? Or yeah, yeah. Lines? Just for posterity's sake. Posterity. God damn it, guys. I want to eat my pizza while it's hot. On a night when Dan's pizza got way too cold. See, that's... That's damn good right there. Not good. That was good. Okay, now Nigel, I need you to record your lines, but while eating pizza, just just <laughs> munch it down as hard as you can. Just be like extremely nonchalant about the end of the world. I hate you guys. <laughs> yeah, bring that energy right there.